So for those of us who are still pretty new to this conversation, what's the difference between a dispensary and a clinic? Sure, so a dispensary is a storefront uh, retail operation that is selling cannabis and they claim to be medical um, because they require patients or people who go in to show some sort of medical need for cannabis, but there's no doctors involved, there's no real health oversight. It really is the sale of cannabis using a medical ruse to permit it to permit it to get under some constitutional protection that may or may not exist there. So for example I go in and I say I have terrible headaches the migraine medication I've been using isn't working I want marijuana instead and it's like a quid pro quo like Typically, typically. So it depends on the dispensary. They each have their own policies. Um, most dispensaries, if you can show that you have migraine medication or some other evidence that you have migraines, that usually usually will be sufficient for them to uh, sell you cannabis. Okay, but you're with cannabis clinics. Yes. How is that different? So cannabis clinics, like Canadian cannabis clinics, we are medical clinics. Uh, you know, if you stuck your head into a clinic, there's nothing that distinguishes what we do from any other doctor's office in Canada. We have doctors on staff who are seeing patients and making a medical judgment as to whether cannabis is a suitable treatment option for your particular condition, whether that's pain, arthritis, epilepsy, there's any number of conditions. You know, the big difference is twofold. One is what we're doing is entirely legal. We work within the confines of the MMPR, the Marijuana for Medical Purposes regulations introduced by the, gov the Conservative government. Uh, and we help patients order their cannabis from the licensed producers that have been authorized by Health Canada. So for instance, again, I go in for some kind of medical reason, whatever it is, I've got a prescription or, or someone in your clinic sees me, a physician, yep. Yep. determines this is an appropriate remedy. Yep. And then where do I get the marijuana from? So the only legal way to get cannabis medic for medical purposes right now is to order it from a licensed producer who then sends the cannabis to you through the mail. That is the only legal way to get medical cannabis presently. Okay, so that's the kind of framework that we're all living in right now. That's correct. The health minister today saying we're going to move to legalize this around this time next year. How do you see that changing the landscape? I think fundamentally it's not going to change that much. I think there's still going to be a strong need for clinics like ours because I think medical cannabis is going to be treated separately than recreational cannabis. What we saw in Colorado is that the medical market actually tripled in size following the introduction of re recreational cannabis because of two two reasons it's thought. One is the normalization of cannabis. A lot of the people who wouldn't have considered it before, the stigma's now m removed and so right. they may consider it. The other one is taxation. Medical cannabis is not taxed or is taxed at a much lower rate than recreational cannabis down there. So those people who would fall into the medical system have an incentive to stay within the medical system um, because it's going to be cheaper for them because that they get, get the benefit of medical oversight and they get a comprehensive healthcare plan whereas people who are using it recreationally are just doing it for recreational purposes. Purposes. So I think it's going to maintain the need for clinics like ours and in terms of what the actual distribution model will look like for recreational cannabis, that's still anybody's guess. Well, I mean, there have been organizations like Shoppers Drug Mart or uh, even you know, LCBO in Ontario, but other liquor marts across the country saying, well, maybe we're the venue for dispensing this because we already asked for everyone's ID, that kind of thing. Yeah. If, if the big players were to come in, and be given license to dispense this, what would that do to smaller organizations like yours? Again, fundamentally, what we do and, and the real resource that we provide right now is access to doctors who are willing to prescribe. Very few doctors in Canada feel comfortable prescribing. So to the extent that you still need a prescription, there's still gonna be a role for clinics like ours. Uh, you know, if companies like uh, Shoppers or the LCBO come in from a retail perspective, you know, the LCB, LCBO will be coming in from a recreational perspective, right. shoppers a medical perspective. You won't need a doctor, but that's not going to impact what we do, which is really connecting, having physicians see patients who are in need of medical cannabis. You know, notwithstanding the fact that there's a large percentage of the population that have been recreational users of marijuana for a long time, yeah. there's still, I think, tremendous confusion in the country about what's taking place now, what's legal, what's not, where we're at. How important do you think it'll be, especially a year down the road, for some kind of public awareness campaign to accompany whatever the federal government moves forward with? I think it'll be important. I think it's more important from a public health perspective so people understand the risks of using cannabis before they engage with it. Um, in terms of clarifying the scenario, in terms of what's legal, what's illegal, 
I imagine and I hope that the government will come forward with if there's going to be components of what exists right now that are operating in the gray market or the black market, I expect whatever legislation comes through is either going to move those from the gray market into the legal market and force them to comply with certain regulations, or there will be an effort to try and shut them down and force them out of business. So I expect you'll see a fairly clean line between what's legal and illegal when the new regulations come out. At least that's my hope. And, and I just before I let you go, that's the, sure. I think for some people it's a fundamental question. If the argument here is in legalizing it, you drive out a criminal element. Do you believe that will happen? I think it can if it's done properly. Um, right now, uh, the dispensaries are getting access to their cannabis from growers who are completely unregulated. You know, some people in the industry suggest that it's all hell's angels who are who are operating these grow facilities. Mm -hmm. And if you can create a marketplace and let economic forces uh, create a market where it's cheaper, safer, better to buy legal product than illegal illegal product, I think you'll see the market move in that direction, particularly if that's supported with police initiatives to try and weed out anyone who's operating outside of the newly created system. This is really helpful. Thanks for your explanations. My pleasure.